What are some productive ways to let your anger out? Swimming. I always feel so much better after getting out of the pool. So swimming doesn't help but climbing out of a pool does. Just kidding. I swam competition decades ago and it was mentally cleansing. I could start a workout pissed stress whatever and by the time I was done with a few miles literally everything else in my life that was bothering me was quite literally washed away. I'd just take my frustrations out on the water and leave them behind me when practice, or the meet, was done. So refreshing. I always feel so much better after swimming, and I'm so heartbroken that I'm my country due to corona all the public swimming pools are closed I'll be so goddang happy when they open again. I have PTSD and have lived with anger and anger issues for most of my life. For me, nothing beats exercise. I like to lift weights. It completely takes the edge off. Heavy bag work is good for cardio and anger abatement. Yoga is great for both exercise and meditation. There is no one exercise type that is right for everyone. Try different things until you find one that you will do consistently. It could be running, swimming, lifting, yoga, martial arts, etc. Figure out what works best for you. Also, consider your diet. I found that some foods messed with my stomach. This in turn messed with my head, which brought out the anger. Over time I have eliminated various foods from my diet and it has really helped. Finally. Get your sleep dialed in. Try to get 8 hours a night, if possible. The same 8 hours. I go to bed around 12 am and get up around 8 am. Being consistent has been huge for me. It may seem like a lot, but once you get into a constructive, healthy lifestyle, your mood will improve, your anger will be manageable, and your general quality of life will improve. This is spot on. And a big thumbs up to the sleep part. Rough sleep habits have left me in some bad places in life. Drumming. As a 30 year old DI punk drummer, use ear protection if you do this. 40 year old punk guitarist, here. What? As a 75 year old by the books church drummer, still use ear protection if you do this. Had a friend that did this and only this to release his anger. This is very interesting one. Since it involves lots of high energy movement and lots of noise which would also potentially come with an anger outburst, yet instead of potentially harmful and obnoxious, this option could actually sound really good if you choose music rhythms that can release anger without sounding like a total cacophony. Heavy metal may be a good choice here, since it's very fast paced and high energy. The only downside to this would be the possibility of driving your neighbors crazy, but at least it's much better than screaming all the time. I play guitar when I'm angry. I usually play gent nearing on death core or thrash. It's so fast and aggressive and makes me feel in control. Even just the act of listening to it is therapeutic. I think metal works so well because it kind of matches me making me feel less isolated. Your mileage may vary with this one. My dad was a professional drummer with an anger management problem. Instead of actually banging on the drums while he was mad, he'd beat me up instead. Needless to say. We don't talk anymore and now I'm the one with an anger management problem. Whenever I can't exercise or burn out the feelings, I write, pour your heart out, and if you're worried that someone else may read it later, you can burn it to release the energy, or delete if you write on the computer. Either way, you can feel free to unload. Pro tip, if you write on your computer, make sure not to use permanent marker, take it one step further and burn the computer. My therapist actually recommended I specifically use pen pencil on paper for things like this. Her explanation to me was that research showed that typing does not help with that action to brain connection as much as physical writing does when doing therapeutic writing. Yeah you can do it faster and better stream of consciousness if you type but you're not reaping the same benefits. Endurance running. My best runs were anger burns. Now that I am covered flabby. House cleaning. Piss me off and my place will be spotless the next day. I clean when I get angry. The results help me stay calm as well. Win-win. Yup. Waking up the day after a good angry clean in your fresh bed sheets. Out of the dryer PJs. Fragrant room rocks. Can I piss you off and lock you in my apartment? A rather uncommon and odd one that I often use is silent screaming. Or dragon breath as I like to call it. I simply press my face deep into a pillow and blow air out from my lungs with my mouth wide open, but without using the muscles to move my vocal cords, so I get the energy release of screaming very loud, without actually screaming. This can work very well if you're mad at something or someone, 
just visualize said cause of anger while you do this. I personally find once the energy is out, I'm no longer angry. Second technique, which I find works really well for releasing stress as well, is a lifting technique that I use. Lift a heavy, solid object and position it directly out in front of you. Keep your back and arms straight and just focus on holding it there still as long as possible. This can get tiring if you use a really heavy object, like me with my office chair, but I find it clears any nervous or angry energy I have, oh no, I used to scream to my pillow for real. I stopped cuss once I was so angry when I woke up the next day I had all the capillaries around my eyes burst, so I had purple black lighting bruises radiating outside from my eyes no it didn't look cool, it looked like my misery made physical. Saving this thread because I do have anger issues. A very small tip for a very small part of the process. If you have trouble not getting angry when discussing something or trying to work through a problem with someone always imagine the conversation is being videotaped. If you keep that in the back of your brain you will always think about what you say and it could help unplug your mind a bit from the anger. But being able to communicate your angry with someone without being overly angry is a big part of that puzzle. You got this it's not an easy road but totally doable. I was working at a crappy little store at the mall, say, video hut, and one day a kid who couldn't have been older than 5 or 6 in the store with his mother and he looks quite pouty, I assume it's cause he's just bored in this grown up store until, after a few minutes his mother asks him what's wrong and he replies rather matter of factly, mommy, I am mad and I am sad because you didn't let me get the Britney Spears doll, she says thank you for telling me, it's okay to be mad and sad, and gives him a hug. All I could think was that kid is learning a really tough skill really early on and is probably gonna have a much easier time of things because of it. For visibility in case it gets buried me comment OP. Or for anyone who also has anger issues. A lot of us are in the same boat. Full body workouts. Phoebe style running is so freeing. Reject adulthood return to childhood. Though this is generally good advice. I'd caution anyone to work out carefully. Which is easy to forget when you're a little too amped up, especially during heavy lifting, that's when injuries happen. Source, personal experience, sadly, RIP, this is true, had an altercation with my boyfriend and decided to let off some steam by weightlifting. I lifted too heavy and let my form slip when I was deadlifting, ended up spraining my lumbar minutes into my workout and was in constant pain for days after. Lesson learned, D-E-A-D-L-I-F-T. You can't be angry after deadlifting 5 reps of 85% 1RM. Hell, you can barely even think. Exercise is amazing for releasing anger. Also helps with mood elevation. Shameless brag here. I was 296 pounds and a full blown alcoholic probably on the verge of suicide. I joined a gym that had a punching bag. I remember punching it and it felt amazing. I just thought about all of the pain I've been through and just channeled it into hitting that thing. Weight started coming off, and I quit drinking because I wanted to lose even more. I lost 80 pounds and been sober 2 years. If it wasn't for that punching bag, I'd still probably be fat maybe dead tbh. I was 8 months sober here compared to when I was a drunk. I think I was down 40-50 pounds here, but and sure, super proud of you. I hope that punching bag shes sand when you walk in. I'm so glad I stumbled upon this post and read your comment. OC25. This is what I needed. Fit alcoholic guy here. Been drinking daily longer than I been working out. Any advice? I refuse to give up either but my GF says I need to give up booze. I do manual labor and I release a lot of stress by swearing at tools and people and asphalt and god. And there are other benefits that are long term. A lot of people talk about being stuck in a downward spiral. I think exercise could be considered an upward spiral. Every time I feel like shin stop exercising it's such a damn vicious cycle. I go, nah, I'm not exercising today. I feel so yucky, and then I feel worse. Then repeat for 5 days or more. I like music, cleaning, with music, walks, with music, and if I'm really angry, this may sound stupid, but it's extremely effective. I write a letter about it. That will never be seen by anyone but me. Where I can vent all the angry thoughts and get them out of me without hurting anyone. With music. It very much depends on the person. Some people just need alone time. Some people need distraction. Some people need to climb a mountain and scream. Try them all out until one clicks. 
My friend had a punching bag in his room and when he would get angry he would beat the shout of it. He got ripped because of it and he never hit anyone or got into a rage. My old friend also had a punching bag for workouts and for your information you don't have to suspend them from the ceiling. He would just toss it on the ground in his apartment and go to town on it. This reminds me in AP psychology. Using a punching bag as a means of catharsis can actually make people more aggressive. There was a study where one group was given a punching bag and the other group was not. If I can recall correctly, the group with the punching bags were shown to handle aggression poorly because they would lash out more harshly at a third party. I used to be an outdoor education teacher in Alaska, sometimes when the conditions were just right. Our groups could get to the tops of mountains in thick fog. We would scream into the abyss during these conditions. I had many students tell me afterwards that they were able to let go of anger that they didn't even know they were holding on to. I'm paraphrasing. Screaming on a mountain is therapeutic. Rage cleaning. Grab that fine laundry basket and throw all your stupid clothes in it. Stomp all the way to the washer dryer. Furiously mop your goddamn floor. Get into your garden and lose it on the fine weeds. I may have used this method before. It's a good way to use your angry energy to achieve a somewhat positive result. I find it helps if you mutter under your breath too. As I told my 7 year old today, rage cleaning can be a productive way to get rid of our anger or it can be incredibly toxic. If the cleaning leaves us more angry and resentful than when we started then it's not good but if we feel better and our chores are done there, that's helpful. If you are age cleaning while expecting everyone around you to clean with you or getting mad that you do all the work, or using your age cleaning as a weapon against those who you share space with, it's not good. This, my husband has a habit of rage cleaning and it is actually really disruptive. On the very rare occasion that I am neither working, taking care of a toddler, or already cleaning, the last thing I need is to have someone stomping around in a huff. I either have to participate or leave the house to get out of the way. So no relaxation for me I guess. Writing this because the only kid free day I will have 4 months was ruined by him this earlier in the week. And I am still salty about it. I had been planning to clean, but under less stressful conditions. After taking a couple hours to just unwind, losing my rare chance to relax for an hour also made me clean furiously as well. I honestly prefer doing music on, relaxed, sort of dancing around cleaning personally. F yeah and cuss the whole stupid f fine time. I'm just imagining a dude losing his weeding, cussing out the weeds and stomping and everything. Then his neighbor walking by and he just sits up and goes hey there Jim. Great weather huh? Then turns back to lose his shun weeds again. Same. Especially the mutter under your breath part. I feel like that's the secret sauce for me. It's like this exhaust value purging my anger with each mutter as I furiously clean. Feels so damn good. I like to have a full on imaginary argument with whoever I am angry with in the shower. I win the argument of course I keep my cool and have all the perfect comebacks and the person is left shattered. So satisfying. I love the nonchalant way in which you admit to winning these arguments. Make pizza dough or clean the house. Push away that furniture and vacuum underneath. Oh sh, mom is making pizza again. The pizza dough part is satisfyingly yet strangely specific. Stop, breathe. Close your eyes if possible. Deep long breaths. Count slowly until you can rational think again. You can't always get to a punching bag or a pillow. Sometimes you'll find yourself needing to deal with that anger while in a conversation, in a public place, in front of impressionable people, etc. I'm guessing you may be asking for yourself or for someone you know rather than genuine curiosity. People may look at you funny, but you'll look even more ridiculous yelling, hitting something, or breaking something. The goal is to get past the anger so you can actually think and solve the issue that's causing the anger. If you tend to see red, have a short fuse, or embarrassment turns into anger. Breathing and counting can really turn things around. To help facilitate this, practice breathing techniques whenever you're mindful of it. There are many attributing factors to anger, so it's not a blanket fix. The goal is to slow the body's physical reaction, and regain your ability to think and therefore function. I'm still working to overcome my own issues, and these techniques help. Also never be afraid to reach out to someone or write down your feelings when they come to mind. Good luck. As someone who used to have pretty bad anger issues, and still do but to lesser extent, this is some serious solid advice. I use these strategies when I can feel the anger and rage building. 
you won't always be able to punch something or go exercise. Maybe you'll be sitting in the car or in a meeting. The strategies listed above are great ways to start working through your anger in a controlled way without drawing too much attention to yourself. If you're able to as well, I've found that writing about what I'm feeling in the moment really helps me a lot to calm down and think clearly again. Remember that anger is complex emotions masquerading as a simple one. Fear is a simple emotion, but anger never is. With that in mind, anger is often a response to overwhelming fear beyond our control. Basically fear crossed with helplessness. If your anger is of that kind, biking, there's the delightful thrill of speed that hijacks the anger adrenaline, and the action response feedback loop, pedal harder go faster, is both gratifying and instantaneous which short circuits the helplessness. Anger is also often a result of accumulating hurts, sometimes irrational ones that don't always register on their own. Being treated poorly at work, being treated contemptuously by a lover, not making progress at the gym. If your anger is of that kind, movies, books, music, anything that sparks sympathetic emotion, not sympathetic and empathetic in the oh that poor thing, how sad way, sympathetic in the internalizing someone else's emotions way. Once you are internalizing someone else's feelings and experience you can usually follow the trails back to your own and have more compassion for yourself. This usually brings you back to a more productive way forward. There was a time in my life when I was on a path to miserable, angry misogyny, and my over the top emotional response to Cheryl Strade's world opened my soul to see that ugliness inside of me, and confront it. Doom Eternal. I didn't think I'd have to scroll so far for gaming related stuff, but yeah, killing demons with metal blasting in your ears is a great unwinder. Lift weights specifically deadlifting. I've always wondered what a liver lifting would look like. For lower stamina folks, throwing marshmallows is surprisingly therapeutic, especially the campfire big kind. They have just enough weight to hit the floor with a satisfying thud but they don't bounce or break and there's no secondary damage. You could do it inside or outside. I'm imagining a guy getting upset and frantically rummaging through his pantry looking for the therapy marshmallows. Honestly, I found journaling very helpful. I am able to feel the anger and I am usually able to understand what caused it. Are there any underlying feeling? What value belief was violated? ETC. Running or lifting singing squeeze a pillow write it down sleep. I listen to angry music for happy people. Metal just seems to give me an avenue to let the stress out. Take a walk in the woods. Meditation. I keep failing as keeping it a habit. But once I did a 10 minute session when I was angry af. And I had a new me. In the end of it.